Flip. Skulls, how are you? How are you, mate? Not too bad, you? Yeah, I'm well. I'm well. How? Good. There's a little lag here, so hopefully these. this... uh... Thanks, mate. I'm just growing it out. I'm growing it out. I actually got... I'm going to grow it for... I'm going to grow it for the whole month of April, I think, and then shave it off on the 1st of May. Nice touch. Nice touch. And shave, shave my lid as well. I think I'm going to go long beard oh, and then shave everything. I'm too scared to shave mine. I might not grow back. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, mate? How are you finding it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely interesting times at the moment. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's um, a little bit boring, I guess. Um, not haven't hit any cricket balls for about a month. Obviously, it's supposed to be in India at the moment, and that's not the case. So, just really finding ways to to try keep busy and and keep my mind ticking over. What's the latest with the IPL? Have RCB been in contact? Is there any more sort of indication whether you it'll go ahead or what's happening with the IPL? I uh, still haven't heard. Uh, anymore it's obviously been postponed to april 15 um so yeah just still waiting to hear when you know the final word sort of comes out about that yeah we are just uh, there was a question there i just saw come through about um what did you think about getting joining rcb it's absolutely so disappointing that you can't go but how was your emotion and what did you feel like when you you found out you were playing for rcb uh, yeah, it was pretty surreal, to be honest. I, I remember watching the auction um, while I was sitting in a sort of hotel room bed in Alice Springs the night before um, our second Big Bash game this year. And uh, I remember watching it and getting picked up and sort of being like, wow, did that actually just happen? And then I didn't actually know who was in the RCB team at the time. So I Googled it and to find out I could have been, you know, I was in the same team as Virat Kohli, A.B. de Villiers, Dale Stane, uh, Finchie, Kane Richardson, um, who else, Morris, um, Moeen Ali. I mean, the list just goes on. Um, so it was it was very surreal and obviously would have been an amazing experience. So it's it's a bit disappointing to, to not be there. Yeah, well, I was in I was in Bangalore at the time. I was in a taxi on the way to the airport at leaving India and... I remember seeing it come through on Twitter. I kept refreshing the Twitter feed and I was texting you and it was late in Australia, in Alice. And you were like, oh, is he in that team? Oh, shit, how good is that? You, yeah. you had no idea who else had gone, did you? No, nah, no. Nah, I think I, yeah, it was, it was just watching it out. Of, you know, I had no idea uh, if I was going to get picked up or not. I, I thought it was, you know, an absolute lottery. And to get picked up and then, you know, finding out who was in the team, it was just, just amazing, so... Yeah. Well, well, fortunately, fortunately, you uh, you did well in that first game against the Scorchers, where you got eighty odd not out, and then the IPL auction was the next night, so you timed it perfectly. Um, you've been you've been to India before. You went over with our good mate Buck. Um, what have you? What are your thoughts of India from your past experiences? Yeah, it's um, yeah, I went to Chennai last year and the year before as well for a a couple of training camps at the MRF Pace Academy and yeah, absolutely loved it. Um, you know, there we have, we got to, you know, train alongside the, the other Academy players and stuff and their love and passion for the games, you know, amazing. And, and when we train with them, you know, like they would bowl at us for hours on end and, you know, I absolutely loved it. I thought I learned so much and, um, yeah, just, just love the opportunity to, to play on different sorts of wickets, spinning, spinning wickets and, and, um, yeah, I just thought it was an amazing experience and, and you know, obviously it would have been really cool to, to go over again for, for a tournament, you know, like the IPL. So, fingers crossed, um, might get the chance next year if, if it doesn't end up going ahead. Yeah. Yeah, well, fingers crossed, yeah. And I was really um, excited because you'd be in, but you would have been in Bangalore. We were due to be in Bangalore right now and we would have caught up a bit mm. and been able to come and watch you play. So, hopefully you'll go back to RCB, but... Who knows? Um, what about Indian food? Do you enjoy Indian food? Ah, uh, yeah, I don't don't mind spice, so I'm always happy to to have a few curries and stuff. But by the times I've been over there, we've been very lucky to stay in some really nice hotels, and and the options there were were really good. So you know, there was there was Chinese, Japanese, um, you know, a really nice Italian restaurant as as well as some Indian options as well. So I pretty much um, you know. I ate as normal as I as I would at home. So, um, yeah, well, I was very lucky on that front. 
have you got a have you got a favorite Indian dish off the top of your head? Um, oh, off the top of my head, it would probably be be like a tikka masala or something, one of those sort of curries. Um, but yeah, <laughs> no, always always happy to try and eat eat yeah. everything. Um, I'm not fussy at all, so yeah. And what about what about now while you've got more time on your hands and you're at home for pretty much 24-7? Are you doing much cooking or who's doing the cooking in your house? You live with your sister and your girlfriend's spending a lot of time there. Who does the cooking there? Uh, I generally do most of the time. Um, I'm very lucky. Um, we, we get deliveries from HelloFresh. So it's pretty much already, already um, not quite prepped, but all the ingredients are sort of all in one bag. So I just basically whip out the recipe um, chop a few veggies and, and follow some instructions and, and get some pretty decent meals out of it. So um, it actually works out really nicely. Lovely. Shout out to HelloFresh, a little sponsor yeah. of yours. So very nice from them. Um, how else are you spending your time? It's obviously a strange time. You're meant to be in India. So what are you doing? Give our viewers a little insight into how you're spending your days. Yeah, so um, I'm just trying to I guess, keep as, as busy as I can be. Um, so I'm still studying at uni. I'm um, studying human resource management. So I've, I've only got one unit um, this semester that I picked up. Um, I probably could have done more. Um, but at the time, obviously, it, it looked like my schedule was going to be a little bit busier when I was picking units. So I'm just trying to tick, tick away at that. Um, basically, yeah, I, I haven't really done huge amounts of it, but I'm actually up to date with it which is the first time in a long time I've probably ever been up to date with uni um, and then I'm also trying to just get as much exercise as I, as I can um, so I've got a spin bike at home which I managed to borrow from the whacker and, and I'm also just you know going for a few runs around the local park and, and doing a few little body weight circuits and stuff so yeah just, just trying to keep my mind active and what about all the golf practice in the lounge room that you've uh, put on your new TikTok account yeah. How, how's that going? Yeah, I haven't done it uh, in a few days, but I've probably got about eight hours worth of uh, enjoyment the other day, just just videoing, hitting hitting got uh, little ping pong balls at, at a bucket. Um, yeah, it's great fun. It's yeah, it killed time, so I'm probably going to be uh, getting back back onto that on the weekend and try to do a few more sort of funky things with it. But we'll see. And that was inspired by our mentor, Blake Reed, who's been sort of doing some trick shots in his, in his lounge room with his brother. Um, so shout out to Reedy, who's got some awesome uh, videos on his Instagram account. What, just give us a, give everyone uh, an insight into what your TikTok account is. So if you're on TikTok, make sure you go and follow Flip now or when this video finishes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually can't remember my username, but I'm sure if you just search jo my name, Josh Phillippe, um, you should be able to Josh, find it. There Josh you go. Josh Phillippe, 22. <laughs> There you go. He's, but, he's um, got, uh, yeah, I'm, just... I can't, I'm, I'm getting on it. Getting on... You go. What's that? Oh, it's, yeah. I'm just I was just basically... saying, I'm tell everyone, I'm getting on it. Get... <laughs> it's lagging. <laughs> it's lagging. You're lagging on me. You go. I know. Let's uh, let's see what we got from our viewers. We've got a few questions coming through. Lots and lots of comments. 140 people online at the moment. RCB fan, nice AirPods. Thanks, Connor Richards. Up the sixes. A lot of comments about the sixes. I think we've got a few sixes fans tuning in. Cade Povey, awkward. Yeah, a little bit awkward there, Cade. Can't, can't control technology, can we? Uh, if you've got a question for Josh or for me, send it through. We'll answer them. Um, who is something I want to know, Josh? Who's your funniest teammate? Um, my funniest teammate would probably have to be uh, Steve O'Keefe at the sixes. Um, He's absolute gold. Um, sometimes you don't know what you're going to get with him, but he, he always makes me laugh and absolutely love playing alongside him. So he'd have to be, yeah, my funniest for sure. What about the most annoying teammate? Oh, there's probably a few of them, but another bloke from the Sixers would have to be Popey. Uh, he doesn't shut up at the best of times, and he's very loud and, and can can be obnoxious. But you know, we do love him. But um, yeah, Popey's up there massively. Right. Someone's just said, "What was your mindset going into this year's BBL? You obviously had a really good BBL um, on the back of a decent BBL the year before. What was your mindset going into this one?" Um. Yeah. So I think I think I just try to bring a whole lot of confidence into it. Um. 
I had a little bit of a, a disappointing patch with WA. So I sort of, um, I got dropped from the one day side and the shield side. So I sort of went off and, and hit sort of loads of balls before the first game and, and came in just super relaxed and, and basically just, just really confident in, in where I thought my game was at with, and um, yeah, managed to yeah get off to a really good start. Um, and yeah, I just, just try to keep, um, tried to just keep that confidence throughout. Um, that was my plan. Nice one. Someone just said, uh, who was your childhood hero? They asked us both. So you go first. Um, mine was probably Mike Hussey. Um, I used to play junior cricket at Wanneroo um, and he was, he was there as well. So I used to absolutely admire him and, I used to always uh, hit with the same batting coach he used to when I was really young as well. So I actually got the opportunity to, to meet him when I was about, I think, uh, 11 or 12 maybe and actually have a net session sort of with him. So that that sticks with me forever and, and that was an awesome experience. That's uh, pretty special. Uh, I grew up idolising Mark Warp. He, I'm a bit older than you, and he was sort of my era, um, and he was such a good player to watch. So Mark Waugh was my hero growing up. We've had a few questions, uh, a couple heaps of questions coming through. So thank, thanks, everyone, for asking your questions. We'll answer as many as we can. Were you excited, and what was exciting you the most about playing with Virat? And also, what is it like playing with Steve Smith? Were two questions I saw. Um, yeah, first, I mean, wow, the Virat, um, he's, you know, well, they're both arguably the, the best players in the world. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, it, it's more surreal than anything. Um, you know, just to be coming up, coming up alongside, you know, potentially playing with them and, and as well as just training alongside and being able to ask questions and, and just trying to learn as much as I can. So that's probably for Virat and, um, yeah. Smithy, um, yeah, he, he was a massive part in me actually getting across to the sixes. And, um, yeah, he's, he's one of my heroes. And it, it was just amazing to be out in the middle with him and be able to put on a few partnerships with him and, and also pick his brain as well and, and um, you know, be out there and, and working out how, how sort of he goes about it as well. So that was, that was just awesome. You might have just answered it, but someone wrote, who's your favourite player to bat with? Who's your favourite batting partner? Um, oh, it's a tough question. I've had a lot. Um, I could name a few to be honest. I guess in in the T Twenty stuff, um, I quite like batting with um Vincey James Vince, um, who was our overseas. Um, he's always good to bat with. Um, um, obviously Steve Smith was very good. Um. Whoever whoever my opening partner at the top was, um, I think me and Husey put on a, a few really good partnerships, and you know he he was really good to bat with as well, being a left hander. Um, who else? Oh, the list goes on. I could honestly name so many. Um, everyone brings something different to the table, um, and yeah, I guess yeah, anyone who I've put on a, a big partnership with, and you know they're always good to bat with. Yeah, absolutely. Now someone wrote. Um... Josh, how to prepare ourselves mentally to play at the highest level? Um, yeah, so that's a it's a big question, really. It's probably a lot bigger than it than it sounds. But I, you know, I remember my first taste of it when I got the opportunity to actually play for the Scorchers um, against the Sixers um, in my first ever um, pretty much professional game of cricket. Um, you know, I really struggled um, to cope with with sort of, you know, the, the crowd and, and just the fact that it was on TV. And, you know, I, I guess I made a, a lot bigger deal of it than it actually was. But at the time, because it was all new to me, um, I guess it was very overwhelming. Um, but I, I did a little bit of work with it with a sports psych. And, and then the following year when I went to the Sixers, I, I just um, basically, you know, acknowledged and, and accepted that there was going to be a lot of new and different distractions that I was going to have and basically just tried to, you know, accept and acknowledge them and then just go on with, with exactly what I wanted to do. So um, instead of trying to shut everything out, which is I think what, what some people say to do, uh, that certainly didn't work for me. I just, I just accepted that there was going to be a lot of challenges there and, 
and then just try to um, work almost with them. Um, so that that's what worked for me. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And like you say, it's it's hard to sort of say do this and that's going to work. Everyone has their own mind and their own things that work for them and doesn't work for them. So everybody needs to sort of try and figure things out for themselves. And you spoke about that in our podcast we recorded um, prior to BBL 08, sort of 15 months ago. So guys, if you haven't listened to that podcast with Josh, we go into more detail in that. So check that out. Another question here, is your long-term goal to take the gloves for Australia and open the batting? Yeah. Good question. Um, yeah, I think oh, I think long term it's a, it's an absolute dream to to play for Australia. Um, I guess you know, however that happens, um, if it happens, you know, I'd take it with both hands, whether it's with the gloves or as a batter. Um, but I, I definitely I love keeping. I think it's a, a massive part of my game, and you know, I'd like to think that that one day, um, you know, I can keep and and bat in all formats of the game first in, in state cricket and, and then, yeah, who knows, maybe at the next level as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, no doubt the whole cricket mentoring community will be behind you. Now, Lachlan Pratt, one of my teammates at Perth, has said, thoughts on Tom salad and facial hair. Pratty, if you, you mustn't have been on at the start, I'm growing my beard, growing my beard for the whole of April and then I'm going to shave it and my head off on the 1st of May. So that's what's going on there. Flip. Yeah. Um, Connor Richards has said, how did high school cricket influence, impact, and help you your, you take off your career? So he's one of my schoolmates, so that's that's a bit of a loaded question. <laughs> um, oh, well, there you I went go, to Connor Kareen, Richards. Yeah, went to Kareen Senior High School and uh, we were lucky, lucky enough to have a, uh, a, a T20 team. Um, it was just sort of on, on carpet and it was against um, not really cricket schools. Um, but, you know, I managed to captain that team in year 12, which is obviously a, a, a big achievement that I'm very proud of. Um, and I actually picked, you know, Connor, who never played cricket before, I used to bat him at three. Um, and, yeah, we, we got to the semifinals and I think we got, uh, we were chasing 120. And I remember this vividly because... I think we got bowled out for 90 and I was about, and I made about 70 of them. So um, that's, that's how our our school T20s went. (laughs) We, uh, yeah, didn't have the, Um, the... so Will Abel has said, I think this might be another loaded question. How tight the baseball cap had to be done up? Yeah, that is another one. Uh, Very tight. Um, it's actually it's actually a women's size hat, so it doesn't have to be done up as tight as the rest. Uh, I found a little loophole that, you know, women's hats actually fit quite snug, but yes, it is done up tight. Well, there you go. Something people probably didn't know about you. Now, Josh Holburn, a young guy that we interacted on Instagram a bit, has said, how many hours were you training when you were a kid? Um, I don't think it was a... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure the the exact amount, but I would say, you know, I was a part of a club cricket side and a district cricket side. So however many nights a week our club side trained and both and two nights a week with the district side and, and maybe one extra hit a week. Um, so I wasn't completely overloading it, um, but I, I was probably training most nights of the week um, with also, you know, a, a personal session whether it was with my dad or, or with a friend at the Nets. So I think, um, you know, I was, I was, I was training enough. Um, someone has said Finn Dool's another one that we interacted a bit. What is the one bowler? So should, sorry, who should say, who is the one bowler you like facing and the one you don't like facing? Um, hmm, good question. Um, I'm not entirely sure about who who I like facing. It'd probably have to be a spinner. Um, but I don't want to say because it just might, um, you know. It'll jinx uh, you. I don't know. Yeah, it might jinx me. Um, don't like facing. Um, oh, Cameron Gannon in red ball cricket is an absolute nightmare. Um, yeah, he'd, he'd be one of the worst, I reckon, for me. 
Well, I saw a, I saw an image today that he's coming over to the West. Have you heard much about that? Uh, no, not really, to be honest. Um, yeah, haven't haven't really heard. It was so there you go. So it's something on Twitter. So I don't know. I don't know how true it is, but he might be might be your teammate next season. We'll wait and see how that progresses. Oh, well, that um, that would be very. We handy. have got. So, Zach Harrington, I think, is a statement, not a question. The good thing about you, Josh, is that you're a good young fella and you're already playing for the Sixers and scoring runs at the top of the order and doing your job with the gloves. Keep it up, mate. Excellent. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Okay. What about your match day routine and how do you get in the mat, like in the mood to play? Um, oh, I, I probably don't too much um, have a routine, I guess, when you, when you start travelling and... Um, and stuff like that. Um, obviously, you can't do as many things that you would like if you were just at home. But for me, it's probably more based on getting a really good night's sleep, um, having a decent brekkie, and and trying not to think about it too much. I like to try come in come into the game as as fresh as possible. So just really trying to be super relaxed and and finding a way to do that. Yeah, nice, nice. And that sort of answers a few other questions. Brody Gordon, one of the guys I coach, said, who's got the best chirp from the players you've played with? Um, oh, well, this is, this would have to be Steve O'Keefe. And uh, when I played probably my third, second 11 game, it was against New South Wales and he was playing. And, um, yeah, he he definitely, he taught me a new one, fair to say. Um, it was, yeah. <laughs> Good, good chat from him. Um, and now we're teammates, so luckily I don't have to cop that anymore. But that was um, that was probably the best I've had. So, yeah, very good. I bet you enjoy being on his team now, not on the receiving end of it. Abs- absolutely. Now, Caleb Forty Eight has said, Josh, do you think being fit has a big impact on your game, and what sort of fitness program do you have personally? Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. I think it's it's yeah a massive part of of the game, especially today. Um, you know, being being as professional as uh, as it is. Um, you know, we've obviously got obligations to to hit fitness targets. Um, you know, from from the start of preseason all the way up until almost the end of the season. So, um, yeah, our, our fitness programs is. Um, in season isn't as much as it is in, in the preseason, but it, it's got a lot to do with um, sort of short and sharp, um, you know, sort of our high speed meters and, and also, um, you know, um, having good endurance as well, because if you bat for long periods of time, um, you know, and if it's hot, um, you need to be fit because um, it, it has an impact on on your sort of um, on, on your mental side of the game as well. So if you can be as fit as you possibly can, um, you know, when when you bat deep or bat for long periods of time or even long days in the field, um, it really helps your mental side as well. Absolutely. Now, Olivia Russell, this is a bit of a loaded question. I suppose I'm reading this one out, but she said, how has cricket mentoring impacted you in a positive way? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, obviously we've become, you know, really good mates now. Um, and yeah, I guess, you know, I think it, it's a really good company and, and I really enjoy being almost a, a part of it as well because I think it's got, it's got a really good impact on, on sort of the younger age players aspiring to to get to the next level and, and I really think it it's sort of showing a, a really a nice little pathway and, and some really good advice for, for young people along the way if, if they want to develop their game. So, yeah, I really like what it's all about and, and I'm, I'm really happy to, to be a part of it. Thank you, mate. Well, we love having you a part of it and hopefully everyone's enjoying this chat. We'll go for a few more minutes. Um, what's been your, what's your favourite Big Bash moment? You've obviously played some amazing innings. Um, you won the title this year, but what's what's your favourite moment? Yeah, I think my, my favourite moment would have to be um, winning, winning the final this year. Um, you know, that, that was just amazing. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were, were very sceptical to see if the game was even going to go ahead because... The forecast was was absolutely diabolical. I think it was 120 to 200 mils of rain forecast for the day, and you know it was really cool that you know the 
it just seemed, seemed to all go to plan. Um, the clouds just went away and, and we managed to fit a 12 over game in and, and um, yeah, just being out there and, um, just, you know, winning and, yeah, it was just amazing. And, you know, it's really cool to say I've been a part of a, a winning um, a winning season in the BBL, which is so big in, in Australian cricket. And not just a part, but a big part. Um, someone just said, where, is, where did that go? Um, da, 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 da. No, lost it. Sorry, lots of questions coming through. Missing some. Um, highest ever score. What's your highest ever score? Um, it's a 161 not out. I got it in a cup game um, for Newcastle Cricket Club um, in 2017, I reckon. So that that was the highest. <laughs> I uh, I did some coaching at Newcastle last year. Questions come through. <laughs> ben Ch- Ben Chirella. Uh, I don't know if I should read this out. Actually, I think I'll let that one go through to the keeper. Um, very good though. Where is it? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll we'll talk about that one off camera. It was very funny. Okay. Um, what is this? What is the secret to your great bat swing? How do you put work on it? How do you do work on it? Um, yeah, I guess it, it's a uh, it's a swing that I've kind of developed. Um, I I wouldn't say I was necessarily trained to to sort of do it the way I do it. I guess it's just evolved over over a period of time, and and it's definitely got a lot of fine tuning to do, which I'm trying to work on. But um, yeah, I guess um, I'm very lucky to have quite quick hands, so um, you know I'm my bat manages to sort of flay out a bit bit far away from my body, but I'm I'm able to sort of pull it back in and and swing it back through quite fast. So um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it that way. Um, but yeah, I guess guess I'm I'm lucky that that I can find a way to make it work. Uh, I think this might be one of your mates again, Luke McQuaid. Why are you so bad at cod, Josh? <laughs> well, I've got plenty of time to practice now, so uh, yeah, I'll get better for you. Uh, very good. Uh, the real Arjun has written, does skulls ever get angry? Uh, not really. I don't really see the point. I just try and put a positive spin on things. So no point really. A couple more questions before we wrap up. We've been going for about half an hour. Um, hey, mate, massive Sixers fan. And I was really intrigued to find out your honest thoughts on whether the Sixers grand final win was as meaningful with the poor forecast. And I think you touched on that a little while ago, but I don't know if you want to go into that anymore. Yeah, uh, well, I guess you know we we got a game in, and yeah, I, I don't think it's it's any less meaningful. I, I think the only impact was um, the amount of fans that were at the ground. But um, you know, when it, when things are rain affected, um, you just got to take it as it comes. And you know, we got a game on, and and the wicket was you know excellent. The outfield was excellent, um, and you know, we we almost got a full game in. So it, it definitely doesn't doesn't sort of taint anything absolutely not and another good question here uh ali hams uh was him josh tell us about the mistakes you made in your early days which held you back to become a better player um yeah i think i think trying too hard was one um you know i think um it took me a long time to to work out that I play my best cricket when I'm relaxed and I'm not putting pressure on myself and I'm not trying too hard. Um, and yeah, as funny as it sounds, um, also just, just finding a way to, to, I guess, you know, accepting that I'm going to get out. Um, so I can, I can come in and, and just, just, you know, almost try to get as many runs as you can before you get out because it's the inevitable. Um, but yeah, just, I guess just, just finding a way to, to get in the right headspace to play well, which, which for me is, is being relaxed and being really clear on what I want to do. And, and I feel like when you're, when you're trying too hard or or want it too bad, you, you just, you know, it's really hard to get into that place. Yeah. And what about during the big bash that's just finished and you obviously player of the final, you, you had a really good start with the 80 odd not out against the Scorchers. Got a few more runs. You, you got a few runs in Alice Springs, and then 
things didn't go so well for a few games and then you bounced back with, I think it might have been runs in Coffs Harbour against Adelaide or, or something like that. But how did you bounce back from that tough period? A lot of cricketers, all cricketers go through it where they have low scores or bad games. How did you, you're in the spotlight and there's pressure on people are talking about it. How did you deal with that? Yeah, so yeah, I, I missed out in probably four or five games in a row and, and that was at the time, I guess, in, in T20 cricket when we're playing every two to three days, it, it felt like it, it just happened so quick and, and all of a sudden, you you know, you're going from being really in form and, and smacking them everywhere to feeling like you, you can't hit the ball off the square. So I guess for me, I just I just went back to the real basics um, and I just, I know for me, hitting the a lot of volumes of balls, um, is a really important thing in my game. So I went back and, and just hit lots and lots and lots of balls and and almost tried to hit myself, I guess, back in the form in the nets and, and just got a lot of confidence out of that and then um, found that that's what worked for me. Awesome, awesome. Uh, last couple of questions. I know I've said that already, but what was your thought process while facing Rashid Khan? Um, my thought process was... I can't pick him. No one else can pick him. So I'm just going to try sweep every ball. <laughs> that was probably, that's probably as in depth as that went, but I just, I just try to sweep him. I thought that was the best option um, to, a, to a bloke you can't pick. So yeah, that, that's all I tried to do. And I tried to sort of manipulate the field like that. And it worked. It really worked to that. Um, I remember you got some, had some success against him in Cox Harbour. Um, Final question, what are you going to do? Let's say isolation lasts for another two or three months. Everyone's at home at the moment, especially people in the Northern Hemisphere, the UK, who are meant to be playing, starting their season very soon. How are you going to try and better yourself both personally and as a cricketer? Like, obviously, you've spoken a little bit about your fitness, but will you get a ball and a stump or will you get a, like a, off a wall or a bat on a ball and a string? What are you going to be doing at home to try and be a better cricketer and a, and a better athlete and a better person? Um, yeah, good question. Time, um, but yeah, for me, I'm at the moment. I'm obviously trying to better myself with some with some other skills like uni stuff. Um, I'm trying to read uh, as much as I can. I'm going to listen to lots of podcasts um, to try better myself on on sort of that side of things. But. Um, yeah, I, I think we're still allowed to go to the park, so I'm going to have to find someone to sort of throw me some balls at the park at some point. But um, at this stage, I'm I'm probably just trying to work on the sort of more mental side and and just try, um, you know, develop some some other skills at the moment. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, Flip, it's been a pleasure, mate. I love our conversations. Always learn from you and enjoy sort of helping you as much as I can. So hopefully, our audience, we've had. Uh, a few hundred people watching at a time. So, guys, thank you all for being uh, online and being engaged in this, and hopefully you all got some value. Um, I'm going to try and bring you a few different people, but we might get flipped back on in a few weeks and answer a few more questions as well. So, Joshy, well done. Well done on everything you've achieved so far, and we've got, no doubt, many, many, many more great things on and off the field to come. Thanks, girls. Cheers. Cheers for having me. All it was right. good fun. Cheers, legends. Logging off now. Have a good arvo. See you, man.